Hi there, Tracy from Kazadan's Equestrian and welcome to this week's video. If you're new to my channel, have a look around and if you like some of the videos you see, please feel free to share them around. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also click on that notification bell so that you get notified every week when I put a video out. This week, I'm actually starting to have a look at some behavioural problems that we might have in the horse and what are some of the physical or veterinary issues that may well be associated with this. Okay, so there's very few of us who have horses that have no particular issues or are perfect and bomb-proof under saddle. But sometimes our horse's behaviour either changes or is very significant in a particular area. Most of the time we look for um, training or riding ways to prevent this behaviour. But what I'd like to do is present a few of the ideas around what are some of the veterinary reasons that could be explaining your horse's behaviour that really you should be investigating and ruling out prior to assuming that it's either naughtiness or disobedience. I'm going to do a couple of these videos in a row so that I can look at particular and different areas and different behaviours of the horse to try and identify what are some of those behaviours that can be symptomatic of an issue. So today I'm going to go over some of the reasons that your horse may be showing you some kinds of resistance in the mouth and the head. What does this resistance look like? Um, always wanting to have their mouth open, maybe incessantly trying to stick their tongue out or their tongue over the bit, moving their jaws from side to side, and also it may be in response to rain pressure, some particular behaviours occur, like lifting their head up and even to the side, tilted. So if your horse is showing this behaviour, what are the things that you need to rule out before you assume it's just simply not accepting contact or something like that? First and foremost, teeth, okay? Some premolar dental issues. Um, if you're applying pressure, and you may well be applying pressure to a cracked or diseased tooth or an abscess tooth, this is gonna cause a horse a lot of pain. The presence of wolf teeth can sometimes cause a horse to respond badly to bit pressure. And also, issues in the tongue and the mouth. Um, a cut on the tongue, something in the gum, um, Bot lava may be embedded in the gum and making the horse's mouth uncomfortable. So a thorough investigation of the mouth can sometimes solve some of those problems. If your horse is particularly resistant to rain pressure in a particular direction or in a particular way, sometimes it may be indicated to have a look at the TMJ joint. So the temporomandibular joint is this joint where the bottom of the jaw connects to the top part. And it's actually quite a complex joint. So horses can actually get wear and tear, arthritis, all sorts of problems in this jaw. And so it can be worth investigating that. And sometimes you can even feel heat or putting pressure on this part can cause them some discomfort. So if you're seeing that kind of thing in your horse, that is worth investigating as well, prior to, I guess, telling them off for misbehaving. What are some of the other behaviours predominantly in the head that we might see? Um, head shaking. So there's, when your horse does sort of, I guess, a violent twitch or a violent shake of the head, there are a couple of reasons that this could be happening. One is head shaking, and I have a video on head shaking if you want to investigate that a bit more. And the other is actually a sinusitis or allergies. Horses can get allergies as well, and so this is worth investigating if your horse has suddenly started flicking its head or shaking its head um, more than usual. If you have a horse that's resisting flexion at the pole, this can actually sometimes indicate an issue with the pharynx. If at this point what you're doing is actually obstructing the horse's airway, they will react very, very violently, as you can imagine, to try and get their airspace back. So if there's any kind of obstruction or, or collapse sort of thing going on in the pharynx, then a horse can be very, very resistant to flexing at the pole. So if that's your issue, that may be worth investigating. 
One of the other things that can cause behavioural problems here is um, if a horse is failing to collect again, flexing at the pole um, and resisting that any bit pressure at all, it can also show some arthritis in the pole. This is a lot more common than I think that we than we recognise. Um, but a horse that's got any wear and tear or arthritis or any kind of bone inflammation in this part of the pole will absolutely show resistance. And this one can often cause a horse to even start rearing on pressure. Okay, so if your horse is spooking excessively or is resistant to turn to one direction, one of the things you might like to investigate if your horse is doing this is eyesight. So this is a quick one, but just a summary. Horses that are resisting contact, um, throwing their head in the air, tilting their head, shaking their head, and generally resisting that rein tension. An overview of the things to look for are mouth. Investigate the mouth, the teeth, the tongue, and even the lining of the mouth. You could be looking for head shaking, allergies, arthritis or bone issues at the pole, TMJ joint problems or TMJ joint disease, obstruction or collapse of the pharynx and poor eyesight. These are the things if you've got this resistance in your head. Now I'm talking here about a ridden horse, not a horse in a paddock in particular. So this is adding pressure to the horse where this behavior occurs. So they may be fine in the paddock, However, when you ride them, some of this behavior occurs. These are the things to be ruling out in the head space prior to, I guess, disciplining, training, or going straight to um, responses, assuming it's a behavioral issue, not a physical issue. I think we owe it to all of our horses to rule out the physical issues first before going down a track of assuming they're being naughty. Thanks for listening and wait for next week and I'll start talking about some of the behaviours you might see if you're seeing a horse with problems in their neck.